Well, hello there! My name is Bob, and I'm gonna be here talking to you about the third most common movement disorder in the world, yet not a lot of people know much about it. Strange, if you ask me. Well, let's find out more about it, shall we? Dystonia affects about 250,000 people in the United States alone, and it typically affects those who are in their 40s or 50s, but it can also impact children as well, although not as common, and women are about three times more likely to be affected by this condition than men are. Well, so what does it affect, you may ask? Dystonia is a neurological movement disorder in which the muscles contract at an uncontrollable rate. This causes the body part that is affected to twist and turn into abnormal postures and movements. To diagnose some of dystonia, first, a full neurological physical examination is performed by the physician, and then an MRI scan is usually required by the neurologist to see how the brain and the muscles are affected by this condition. Dystonia is believed to be a disorder of the basal ganglia, which is a deep part of the brain that helps control and maintain coordinated movements such as walking, while preventing unwanted or unnecessary movements at the same time. Well, how do people get dystonia? Unfortunately, the answer to that question is not as easy as it sounds. Dystonia can either occur as idiopathic, which means the absence of lesions within the central nervous system such as the brain or spinal cord, or as a result of a variety of causes such as the environment or other medical conditions. Sometimes dystonia can be due to a genetic predisposition and can be inherited as the dominant trait since each child receives half of their genes from mom and the other half from dad, the chances of them being affected can range from 50 to 100%. Dystonia can be classified based on the regions of the body which they affect. First, there is generalized dystonia which affects most or all of the body. Then there is focal dystonia which is localized to a specific part of the body. And multifocal dystonia involves two or more unrelated parts of the body. How do you know if symptoms of dystonia are present, you may ask? Well, that's a great question, so let's find out. The symptoms include cramping of the foot, involuntary pulling of the neck, uncontrollable blinking, and lastly, speech difficulties. Unfortunately, there is no known cure for dystonia, and the treatments are limited. However, the preferred method of treatment of dystonia can be done by local injection of botulin toxin A in the affected muscles, which is used as a paralyzing agent blocking the release of neurotransmitter acetylcholine. This neurotransmitter is like a messenger by carrying the signals from the nerve, which originally came from the brain, and transmitting the response to the muscle. And therefore, if acetylcholine is blocked, it will prevent the muscles from contracting. There are also medications that help elevate the pain by blocking the effects of the receptors that respond to acetylcholine in the muscles. A study done by Fan et al. showed that anticholinergic drugs administered at high doses exert moderate to dramatic effect on approximately 50% of children and 40% of adults. If continuous injections of Botox or medications don't work, surgery is then considered. A surgical procedure known as deep brain stimulation is performed where a medical device called a neurostimulator is implanted in the brain which sends electrical impulses to the brain to reduce the stimulation of the affected muscle group. We hope you enjoyed this brief overview of what dystonia is, and hopefully by raising awareness about it, we are better able to one day find a cure for this disease. Please consider visiting the website below and contribute to the Dystonia Medical Research Foundation. Thank you for listening.